Hello and welcome back to another Lord of the Rings Rise to War 2.0 video. Uh, today we're talking about, so hopefully some PvP, I'm going to show some reports that I've picked up throughout the day as it started this morning. Um, I've pretty much got no troops left at this stage but it's been fun sort of doing that. Um, and as you can see a lot of it is elf based um, and I'm actually being attacked right now. But uh, I'll probably just let that go for now because the, they've got a siege debuff. So nothing doing really at this stage in that case. But yeah, there's a lot of siege running around, as I like to call it, elves everywhere. So um, just to give you a quick update on the server. Obviously, we are in Gondor. I am the player who plays as King Under the Mountain. And I am still in Dead, uh, which was Toby beforehand. And we were kind of hoping for a bit of a more chilled out season, but apparently not. So, uh, Chapter 6, Rebuilding Glory, is what we're currently on. The other chapters have flown by, but the first chapter did time out. Rankings-wise, uh, I haven't really been trying to get up the personal production for a few days, but my ring is uh, 6, which is pretty impressive. And I'm at 13th now, so I've dropped out of the top 10. Um, but I have got quite a few empty tiles and I'm sure some of these people up here have actually got 10 more tile spaces than me so you know I'm okay with that right now I might see if I can fill an army and uh, take on no Jake while we're on stream so what I've been running is a sort of combat formation is whatever I can get troops out the door on at the moment so Dane I'll just fill this up quickly while we're on so Bjorn I've been running Blood Bjorn with Catters more than anything else, just to spread the troops out. Same as Gandalf the White, really. If I've got enough, I haven't got enough left at the moment. So we can have some Tower Guards. And then it's a toss-up, really, between Gimli and Galadriel for my last spot in this formation. At the moment, it's Galadriel, and as you can see, I can't quite fill a formation. However, not to be deterred, we're going to take on AJ anyway. In about 18 seconds' time. Uh, for the state of the map, let's have a look where we are. So we are Gondor, so we've took a good Gilead and a few keeps around here. Um, I am literally right on this border where Loth have bathed across and decided to attack us. There's a decent pin between um, a fellowship that used to work with us, X-Hub, and Grey and Suk over by Arnold's border. I'm guessing we've took that hit now and they've died. Let me just drop the troops again on Dane because... Uh, I don't want that half army getting hit and I haven't got any more troops. We'll have a look at that report in a minute. Um, just pick up some bits and bobs. So we have sort of done quite a lot of PvP today. Um, but, but so far, to be honest, I haven't got enough troops to actually PvP properly. So we were kind of both sat at this crossing and uh, the fellowship that I'm in is actually notoriously bad at starting in general really to be honest so the fact that we've been pushed here is not really surprising at this stage um, just to show you where I'm at then so the formation itself this is Dane's gear he is my top commander at obviously Zen of Seven um, I can't quite complete the set on him I have run before uh, this pipe on him to complete Warcry and it does work quite well, but the extra attack that I'm getting from the Palantir probably just overshadows it. That and the fact that with Warcry working for those first three rounds, even though that plus 20% damage is good because it's off the damage stat. The issue that I find with that is a lot of people run White Council, so I kind of don't get the benefit from the set anyway. Um, if it was something like Sharp Blade, I'd definitely be considering running that instead, but that's, that's by the by at the moment, so... Uh, secondly, Gandalf the White is also in this formation again, just for mitigation. This is just to give a bit of an overview. Um, White Council has given me a lot of damage mitigation. White Rider is giving me a lot of plus attack for those first few rounds, which, yeah, okay, it gets cancelled out a little bit by um, by other White Council users, I guess, but that's sort of where we're at. I really like Bjorn, I think he's come into his own in um, 2.0, he is running a bit of a weird gear set but these two are kind of the best living slot items and I would argue that's also the best in slot item for damage commanders so the purple helms just to try and uh, well, make up the numbers really I guess. Build wise we're running skin changer because I think that's his best skill. Um, 
Enemy of the Orc has only got 9 points in it just for the simple reason that it doesn't need 10 points in it because I'm not fighting evil. If I was fighting evil, I would run it with that in it. And Andrew and Vale Trieftain has only got 2 points in it because that's all I can afford at this stage. So, uh, just very quickly talking through a little bit of the PvP today. And I will be very quick talking through the PvP today. The one that's just happened, as you saw on the stream, is I think actually the leader of um, Lothlorien and Lame, Nay Um Again, running full elf combo, and we've seen a lot of this today. Siege everywhere, like I said. Um, running the classic Wizard's Firework with ranged might to try and get some extra boost for damage, which is fair enough, but I would probably argue that Sharp Blade might actually be better in that combination I'd have to work it out it's not far off it's about the same but I'd actually argue that sharp blade is better um, and running this kingly kin skill which we've seen a lot of in the PvP today where they're, they're looking for the evade from the owls but the issue with owls is when you hit them they do stay hit because they are pretty squishy so I uh, see we just won that fight there Dame with Sentinels is making my eyes hurt because um, as a dwarf user that really offends me. I, if someone can explain to me why you wouldn't at least use elf melee potentially um, rather than sentinels, I'd really like to know that as I don't see the value in what this is doing here when your, your main point of Dane Ironfoot is to try and get him to deal out as much commander damage as possible. Um, and then we've had some other fights as well, so that was one. Um, Again, similar combination. Again, Dame with Sentinels. If someone can explain to me why you wouldn't at least run Elf Melee to try and get Gil's skill of um, Kingly Kin to prop for you, then please let me know. Uh, and they've got a lot of keepers, it seems, already, which suggests to me that people had too much time on their hands and got a lot of stuff. So I have let them hit my keep a couple of times to see what was hitting me. Um didn't let everyone hit my keep because as you can see I also uh, took out this army earlier on. Again everyone seems to be running this uh, sort of elf combination. It's nice to see a Sildor with some men but I thought this was actually a bit of an unusual build. I've not seen many people go into ring bearers. I've seen people go into great king and last alliance which is last alliance is a great skill. Um, as those three allied formations receive damage from the next eight, hit, eight hits, so it's plus 50 defense and it gradually decreases and it goes to 10 hits, so and then some plus attack. So, Last Alliance is actually a great skill. Um, but generally, the people I've seen who have ran Isildur run this skill because of the follow up and the plus attack. So, particularly if you're going to run men units on Isildur. I would argue that you run King of All the Dunatane to try and get his attack up because his attack is not from commander damage. So uh, that was just another fight that we had earlier on. A bit of pathing, um, knocking around. And I was trying to experiment with throwing uh, Dane around as a bit of a damage bomb to see if it works. And I, I want to have a bit more of a look into that, but people weren't letting me hit with that. So this is probably the most disappointing report I've had today. And I'm really ashamed to say it's against someone who I know pretty well. He used to be in a fellowship with me, and I doubt he's going to let me live this down for a little while. It's nice to see a dwarf user using dwarfs, even though this isn't a dwarf, which is offending me. But he is taking advantage as best as he can of Gandalf the White with White Council, and he will also be taking advantage of... Uh, this skill here. So for each type of dwarf and formation unit in your army, uh, you get plus seven, up to two stacks. So you all have got three stacks from that, plus some extra HP. And the arguably best skill that uh, is on a dwarf for sort of support, I would say. So Falgan has Thrain's Guard. And it's damage taken by three allied dwarf formations for the first six hits, minus 30%, and then it increases at level five to eight hits. And then it's modified by the defense stat at level 10, which makes it really good, particularly when uh, you've got 148 defense. So this is a well-geared failure in, in regards to, it may not be exactly five-star gold, but for his skill set, it's a very well-geared failure. And that, would I would say, is the only fight really I've lost properly today, and it pains me to say that. Um, this was a close fight. 
I wasn't quite full. Um, and this is a very, very good sort of geared formation. Everyone seemingly running a very similar kind of build um, from La Florian, where there is a lot of elves, as you'd imagine, which is quite nice to see. Luff uses actually using elves um, for the evasion and everything else, but it's uh, they're just a bit squishy once they get hit. And it, yes, they do counter damage commanders early, but realistically, I think if that draw plays out, Dane's likely to absolutely destroy uh, the formations that are left there. So that was that. Um, we took another hit from Nain, or Nain Unavail, so I'm guessing that's someone who uh, didn't really fancy putting a name in. Lower level, so as you'd appreciate, um, kind of went down again. Keepers. I do like keepers actually in 2.0, but you need to be able to um, get them with a high level troop to make it work so they actually get some survivability. This looks a good combination. This uh, this guy looks strong, so I uh, actually took out half my army roughly with half an army himself, and it was Dane with how I want to use Dane eventually. Uh, obviously, you can see there from the gear, the gear's very good. I would class these three items here as best in slot items for Dane, possibly when they actually put in HP and command and defense meaning to matter. I know there is a chess piece that has more plus attack than that, but at the moment I'm pretty convinced that's the best in slot item. This is a best in slot item, definitely. The Act of Kaz of Doom and Cask of Pride is definitely a uh, best in slot item. Um, 218 attack, very powerful, unique as well. And with the Ram Riders, uh, it really helps Dane because if I can pull up the troop. There we go, trample. So normal attack reduces the target's defense stat by eight for one round, which doesn't seem like a lot, but to be fair, on a lot of these troops, uh, eight defense is actually not too bad to hit. So the defense here, it just drops it. It's about almost a quarter of the defense off. Um, gives a nice little bit of balance. So then running some elves, as you could probably appreciate. I've seen this combo with Elrond a little bit, and I'd, I'd like to see a lot more of it actually um, bow knights on our run just to see how that works again strongly geared Isildur running the ring bearer tree again so um, that's quite interesting I'd have to do some research into that they've obviously played around with that and made it work again well geared Gandalf the white and Elrond again really well geared it fascinates me that Durin's plate is probably the best troop boosting piece of equipment now when realistically it makes me cry thinking that damage dealers tend to be dwarves and their favourite piece of equipment during the play is now used to boost troops of elven formations. Yeah, then uh, we had another fight here where again making use of Gil's evasion. Nice to see a king of men running around with again decent gear. Let's see what the gill looks like. And the Gandalf the White. Yeah, no, so it was a pretty good formation. I really want to see if I'm right in what I've been thinking with going into damage dealers rather than troop boosters because so far so good with, with most of the hits that I've sort of taken uh, against troop boosting comms. But it'd be nice to see if that stacks up over a period of time. Again, a fairly decent geared uh, combination. But at the moment, Dane's commander damage is, is really sort of shining through in, in PvP, as, as people would imagine. I think I've just got a couple more reports to show. Again, Dane with a lot of damage. Bjorn's is pretty good damage, it, a little bit disappointing, but I think he comes into his own at later levels when I can get more points into uh, Anduin Vale, Chieftain. As I think once this gets beyond level 5 and the bleed increases, um, that'll be a very good skill to have because bleed's one of the better skills. This is what people argue is the best in slot piece for damage dealers in the game and it is basically around the fact that you get plus 24 attack. 
think you get slightly less um, HP, you get a little bit of initiative and some focus, which you don't really need, and a bit of unit attack, but really for damage dealers it's the 24 attack. I'm still convinced at the moment, and I'd like to do more testing, like I say, that uh, the Warborn Baton Plate is actually better because of the defense. Partly because at 235 attack, I don't think the scaling of the extra attack is actually going to do me as many favors as uh, what the defense will do. So that was that. A um, couple more, I think. This was at a crossing earlier on. Again, a really good victory. Um, it's nice to see Elro here and Gimli knocking around. I, I will start using Gimli. I could do with doing it more now. I'm just trying to get him leveled up a little bit first because I would like, considering the elf formations that are coming out of here, uh, I would like Gimli's pursuit. So if I just show this last report, Again, there's some nice gear running around in these combinations. It's, I think, obviously, people have been able to put all the gear into one formation. Is that uh, classic gear? Yeah, so running Hysteria. Some of the classic pieces are actually really good for damage dealers um, and have lots of plus attack. This is actually a really good piece of kit for a damage dealer at plus 30 attack. And then the Palantir is arguably the best in slot for a damage dealer due to the plus attack again. So making the most of the gear there, so that's good. And then a very well equipped Elrond just to finish off. Elrond's been really strong, I've found, in 2.0 so far. Um, I would like to do a tier list at some point, but I, I don't really want to do a traditional tier list. I think I'd quite like to break it down into different tiers um, of different types of troops. So, uh, sorry, different types of commanders. So support commanders, damage commanders, focus commanders. Because I think with it now being a formations game, trying to say that someone's fantastic on their own it isn't really the right thing to tell people. And I think it'd be the wrong information given. Um, so that's where we're at with some PvP from today. It's nice to see some reports. I think there'll be quite a lot go on over the next uh, couple of weeks because it looks like it's going to get quite active now. I was just going to say about Gimli's unique, particularly against LaFlorian and Gil. Um, important to get over 50 focus, to be fair, but then you gain pursuit. And against all these siege elves, I think that's probably a good way of going about it. So I'm just going to try and get him leveled up to level 40 as fast as I can. And then he'll probably replace Bjorn in that formation for the time being. And I'll have to run some kind of semi focus head piece just to get that over uh, over 50 so uh, what's probably best for that at the moment um, probably to be honest I might end up using something like a bone mask um, and just get a little bit of commander defense and, and some HP and then maybe I switch around some gear while I can, something like that. But I'll get his focus over 50 anyway. But that was it for now. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, um, like I say, there's elves running around everywhere at the moment. And Siege is everywhere. Um, I'm not a massive elf fan. Hopefully I'll get some dwarves tomorrow because I've been using mainly men units so far because I've started in Gondor. But uh, thanks for joining in. And if in doubt, as always, always follow your nose.